The career of policing is essentially spiritual in nature. Uh, every aspect of the career, uh, when I say it's essential, the spiritual component is not incidental to the career. It goes to the very heart and soul of what policing, certainly in the United States, is all about. Let me ask you a question before we continue. <clears throat> the police officer has these things, okay? Has experienced these losses and getting this negativity and stuff. Are they oblivious to that? Are they oblivious to the fact that they have now, they are now in possession of their very own cynical view of humankind? They're oblivious to it? They're not oblivious to it. They know it. They know it. The spiritual reserves of an officer are depleted. Each, uh, each and every day, the most routine shift has experiences uh, within it that challenge and deplete an officer's reserves of spirituality. If an officer doesn't have some mechanism to replenish those supplies, he or she very quickly can go into spiritual uh, overdraft and assume spiritual bankruptcy. They've done studies. I mean, I saw one few years back that blew my mind. They were doing that kind of studying of like, you know, the heart rate and all the other indicators by, you know, the other measures, the metrics by which you would measure a person's, uh, you know, being, their state of being. And they measured it with people who are members of a SWAT team. I think that was on one end. On the other end, it was a crossing guard, a cop who was doing crossing guard duty. And they found that it was essentially the same. They were at the same elevated state. But at some point, the shift ends. And the police officer takes off the uniform <clears throat> and goes home and rejoins, you know, goes home. and the biology is a very simple one. The biology is that the sympathetic system can't, isn't in control anymore. And the body, in order to heal and recover, shifts into the other piece takes over, the other part of the autonomic nervous system is the parasympathetic branch. And the parasympathetic branch kicks in and that's when a person is in that blah kind of state. And there's a kind of grim inevitability. It's this inexorable force that's bringing them to this. If you think that they can kind of just choose not to or opt out or no, you know what, I'm going to go off duty because this will be better. Let's think about this. They go off duty and they go back into the normal range. They live normal, happy lives. They're involved. They go fishing. They go into the church choir. They spend time. Wouldn't that be better? Like, why don't they do that? Just do it. What is wrong with these people? They're so darn stubborn. Because it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. They're out of it. And they can't. There's no way for them to muster up the energy to, I'm going to go hang out with, it's not going to do it. They just don't do it. And they're unaware of this process. Like, you stop, let's do that. Go stop some police officer, you know, and say to him, could you do me a favor? Uh, here's a piece of paper and here's a pen. Draw for me, roughly, not to scale, like, however, like uh, these are the dimensions, you know, along these axes, how is your autonomic nervous system functioning? Give them a paper, right, and say, like, go ahead. They'll say, I don't know what you're talking about. Most of them don't know this is happening. In fact, their world of experience, their sample space is kind of themselves. It's this officer going through this experience. The results of this, the destruction, the havoc that it wreaks in this cop's life, and not just that cop's life, if it's that cop's life, then there's collateral damage for all the people in that world, that cop's world.